So recently, I have been having a bit of a problem finding a window manager that I enjoy using. And I've talked about this on the podcast and in a blog post or two. And I've just been having a real tough time kind of settling down into something that I enjoy. And uh, I have had this problem many times before. And usually when I have a problem or I make a switch to something that I'm doing in my workflow, I come here and I make a video about it. In fact, I'm going to post several thumbnails of previous videos where I say I've switched to something. You know, either I've hopped to a different distro or I moved to a different window manager or I've changed to a different browser. I've made a lot of videos talking about how and why I've changed to something new. It's one of the things that I do very often on this channel, more often than I even thought. I went back through my video catalog, which is numbering close to a thousand videos these days, and I discovered that I've made many videos saying my new window manager is this, or I'm changing to this browser or this dis distro. I've made those videos a lot, and I was going to make a another one today. And I was like, oh, well, I've switched to Plasma, you know, and, and everyone would assume that it was because I was of Plasma 6. I'm not even on Plasma 6. I, I just happened to switch to Plasma at the same time. But when I sat down to make the video, I realized that I've made that video before. <laughs> and in fact, I've made that exact video before talking about how I was going to switch to Plasma. And I'm pretty sure at that point, when I made that video, perhaps like three days later, I stopped using Plasma and went right back to a window manager of some kind. Now, I don't even, don't even at this point remember what window manager I went back to, but I did, in fact, uh, change my mind very few days right after I made that video. And that's happened often as well. I make a video saying, I'm switching to this. And then a few days later, I've either switched back to what I was using before or I've switched to something new. So what I want to do today is instead of actually telling you that I've switched to another desktop environment, I want to explain a little bit about why I change my mind so often. Now, there are actually many reasons why, and it's not just because I'm insane. Some of them, some of the reasons why are actually things that make sense, but they make sense for me. So let me explain. But before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So why do I change my mind? Why do I switch to different workflows so often? Well, the answer to that question is many. So First, and probably a very large part of it is ADD. I have spectacular ADD when it comes to my computer. I like to change things up. I have fun switching back and forth between things. That's part of it, a big part of it. I enjoy setting up Plasma from scratch to something that's workable that looks good. I have fun setting up i3 or Xmonad or Qtile or Hyperland even I have fun setting those things up into a final form that I enjoy using or that looks good, right? I enjoy doing those things. I've made many racing videos on this channel just because I enjoy that process so much. So that's a big part of it. Another part of it is that I, and kind of related, is that I get bored very easily. So while I enjoy the process of setting things up and getting them to look the way that I want you know, them to work or want them to look, I also, once I get there, want to experience that process again, and I and therefore I get bored with what I've just set up very, very quickly. It's silly. Not a lot of people are like this in terms of this particular workflow. I understand that I'm weird in this situation, but it's I, I'm here to explain why I do that, and that's one of the reasons why. Another reason why is I'm a YouTuber, which is still one of the weirdest things I ever say about myself. I like to try out new things, and by trying out new things, oftentimes I will experience something that leads me to a video topic, whether that's trying out a new version of Plasma, a new version of Hyperland, whatever, or if I want to try a, try a tool or whatever, Switching away from what I was doing to something new oftentimes creates video content that I can then create and then share with you guys. So that's another reason why I'm the way that I am. But really, I switched back and forth between things long before I was a YouTuber, but that's beside the point. I, I, I still attribute some of it to me wanting to find new things to talk about on camera. Another reason, and this is still kind of interconnected with those first two, is that I work 
from this computer that I sit in front of all the time. Now I do have a standing desk that's beside behind me. I use that all the time. I have laptops that I can use elsewhere in the house or in a coffee shop or whatever. I can do those things. But the vast majority of my work, both for the channel and for my real day job, is sitting here in front of my triple monitor setup with a desktop that sits behind it with all the accoutrement that goes along with it, right? And the thing is, is that when you sit in front of a place that looks exactly the same day in and day out, your motivation to live sometimes goes away. And, and <laughs> a little dramatic there, Matt, yes. But you under I hope you understand what I mean by that is that I, if everything looked exactly the same every single day, my motivation to work at this station every single day would go away. So oftentimes I would switch to something different because it would allow me to have a different view. It's kind, of, it's kind of like being able to move to a different part of the house to look out onto a different landscape or going to a coffee shop or whatever so you can get a different perspective on the world while you're doing whatever it is you're doing for me because i'm kind of stuck here a lot of the times because this is where the vast majority of my work happens and because my monitor here blocks the actual window i have to go all the way over here to actually look out the window changing things up makes things fresh it makes things feel a little new and that has become very important for me when it comes to staying motivated to do things while sitting at this desk it's also one of the reasons why when i you know before i started this weird color scheme challenge with darth vader uh, why i oftentimes would switch color schemes four five six times a day now that's not doesn't mean that I had to create those color schemes four, five, six times a day. That would be, you know, it would take all of my time. But I would have a whole bunch of pre-configured color schemes, and I'd switch between them four or five times a day. It would lighten up or br brighten up my computer to the point where it looked a little bit different. You know, either there's a new bar layout or a new color scheme or whatever, and it just made things feel fresh and not as samey if that makes sense. So that's another reason why I change things quite often is because it allows me to develop a fresh perspective on my workflow and kind of keeps me motivated to keep doing my work. And the final reason that I kind of want to talk about is that sometimes I'm experiencing problems with one of the things that I do enjoy using. So for example, for the longest time recently, I've been having problems with Qtile. Qtile is my favorite window manager. And for a while there, it was crashing. And then I was having problems with the bar just disappearing on one of my monitors for, for whatever reason. And it took me a while to solve those problems. And sometimes I'm not motivated to solve the problems at all. So when I do have experience a problem like that, or you know, when I switched to, to Hyperland, when I had some Wayland problems, or there were some bugs in Hyperland, I switched away to, to something different instead of fixing those, or I was waiting for the fix to happen. And it's just one of those things that, you know, I have multiple things on my system. I have several desktop environments and several window managers that I can just switch to when something breaks. It just makes it a lot easier because a lot of times, if I update my system, which I do every four days, and it breaks, you know, Qtile or it breaks Xmonad or whatever, I don't have the time to fix that stuff right then and there. So I just switch to something else that I already have set up. So that's another reason why I oftentimes switch. But the overarching idea here is that I oftentimes make videos about switching to these things. And I think that making a video kind of expresses a level of commitment that I don't often stick to. I think I put that as diplomatically as I could could possibly do. So I make video saying that I'm switching to KDE Plasma. Three days later, I'm no longer using KDE Plasma because KDE Plasma is oftentimes very buggy for me and you know I can't solve the, bu the bugs or whatever and I just move away after three days. Why did you make the video? Uh, I did this when I switched to Fedora for like the first time and I'm switching to Fedora and, and you know that was like two or three weeks after I made a video saying I was switching to Manjaro you know so I've made many of these videos over the course of the last three and a half years or so and I think part of it is just a YouTube thing where I have an interest in kind of making a video to 
tell you guys about what's going on in terms of my workflow and my experience with Linux. So some of that also, you know, I at one point was making videos every single day and making a video about how I changed just something is very, very easy to do. So I did that quite often. Also, again, going back to the whole content idea thing is when I want to switch to something to gain that those content ideas, oftentimes I'll make a video saying, hey, I'm switching to this because I, you know, I'm going to do a long term review of it or I want to experience this, this and this and I'll make more videos along the line. So oftentimes I'll make these videos where I'm talking about how, you know, I switched to something and then I don't commit to it as long as people probably thought that I would. Now I have gotten better. Okay. I have gotten better at this in some aspects. So distros hasn't been a problem in well over half a year. I've been on OpenSUSE since July of last year. I'm still highly enthusiastic about OpenSUSE. If I can point you to my sticker, I have, <laughs> I have very many good things to say about OpenSUSE, so much so that I've made many videos about OpenSUSE and I'll make many, many more because I enjoy OpenSUSE a lot. I wanna share my love of OpenSUSE. So in terms of distros, I've kind of settled down. Finally, I've settled down. Also, and it took me a very long time to, to stupidly learn this, is that I, I finally figured out in my head that the grass isn't greener on the other side. Okay, it really, really is not. I I can have problems on OpenSUSE, and I have had problems on OpenSUSE, but finally I've realized that hopping to another distro for me personally isn't going to solve those problems. It may solve those problems, but I'm going to have other problems, right? So I could go to Fedora and have an entirely different set of issues. I could go to Ubuntu or Linux Mint or whatever, and just have different issues than I have on OpenSUSE. It doesn't actually solve anything. I still have problems because Linux isn't perfect. Who the hell knew, right? So I've finally learned, in terms of distros at least, that I have some stability if I just stick here and try to solve the problems that are here instead of going somewhere else and experiencing new problems. So in terms of distros, I finally settled down. I found my forever love, or at least forever love for right now, hopefully. You know, I, we can't, I can't say with definitive purpose that I'm always going to be on OpenSUSE. I, I want to say that because I really enjoy OpenSUSE, but once my two-year challenge is over, maybe I'll decide to something else. Right, as of right now, I would bet on no, but we'll see. Uh, I'm on OpenSUSE at least until July of next year, so... I, I think that at that point, I can honestly say that I've I've settled down. But as of right now, it feels like I have. Other things, not so much. So, like I said, I just switched to Plasma. I was going to make a video about switching to Plasma. But I don't need to make a video about switching to Plasma because I've already done that. But in terms of the thing that I use that's in front of me, like not the distro, but the, the window manager or the desktop environment, that stuff is, I have a feeling that that's never going to be a place where I'm going to be able to settle down. I get bored too fast. I enjoy setting things up too much and like i said switching things out making things look different makes my work easier because it makes it less samey right so i have a feeling that my inability to settle down and just choose a desktop environment or just choose a window manager is going to be something that i'll struggle with forever it's just kind of the nature of the way that i do my things and that's you know just that I'm going to try not to make videos every time I make a change. It's not every time. It's just a lot of the times. So I'll, uh, I'm not going to bombard you every time I make a change. Maybe I'll just mention in a podcast during the initial segment of the podcast. It's like, oh, I just, like this last week, I said I switched to Qtile because I finally got Qtile were up and running. Well, Qtile started breaking again, so I switched to Plasma. Maybe I can mention it there, but I don't need to make a video about it. So desktop environments, window managers, I'm always going to switch around. In terms of browsers, browsers is the other thing where I switch often and usually make a video about it. I have found the browser that I want to use probably forever, and that's Vivaldi. I love Vivaldi, has the features that I need to be a proper tab hoarder. It's amazing. It's also a buggy piece of software. It really, really is. Every single time that it updates, it breaks. And I fix it because there are certain kind of workarounds you can do to fix the biggest problems that it seems to have and i continue to use it every time it bugs out i get on Mastodon and say screw this i'm never using vivaldi again i'm switching back to firefox and then 
I use Firefox for a while. Firefox is a good browser, but it doesn't have the tab management features that I really enjoy. Things like workspaces, things, especially like tab stacks, it just doesn't have those. And while you can emulate workspaces pretty good, you can't get to the tab stacks like Vivaldi does, at least as far as I'm aware and I've tried. So I have that experience where I'll switch to Firefox and it's just not quite the way that I want it to be. So I end up going back to Vivaldi, fixing it or whatever. And people think I'm absolutely freaking insane because I keep going to this cycle of Vivaldi breaking, using Firefox, going back to Vivaldi after it's fixed and all that stuff. Because Vivaldi is my home browser. It's the one that I want to use very, very much, but it's buggy. So I... I think my solution here is just to stop tooting about it on Mastodon every time it breaks because people just know that it's going to break and I'm just and I need to know just realize that Vivaldi is where I'm going to be. I just need to go fix it if I can and carry on with my day instead of thinking that I'm going to switch to Firefox and be happy, which will never happen unfortunately, unless Mozilla actually invests some time in innovating on Firefox. So we'll see if that ever happens. I personally doubt it. They're too much too busy paying their CEOs exorbitant amounts of money. So <laughs> that's just neither here nor there. Anyways, that's it for this video. Very, very rambly, but I've, I think that it was good for me to sit here and explain why I am the way that I am when it comes to switching to these things. And I think that if anything, it has allowed me to just kind of get all this stuff out there so people know you know exactly why I'm I am the way that I am. So that's it for this video. If you have any thoughts or comments on any of this nonsense, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreoncom linuxcast You can also head on over to the store, which is available at shop at the linuxcast.org. There you'll find hoodies and hats and desk mats and magnets and all sorts of stuff. All the proceeds for that go directly to help the channel and helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much if you've done that. Thank you so much for doing that if you plan to in the future. So thank you so very much for that. How many times can I say thank you? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, everybody. For, I, I messed up the ending again. Why do I ever do that? <laughs> Thanks, everybody, who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. It's like I've never made a video before. Uh, every time I get to the ending, I just completely just F it up. Anyways, thanks everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. It's the, the funny thing is I say the exact words every time and I still F it up. <laughs> thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.